Teremos agora, então, a palestra do professor Kevin e moderação da professora Andréia Rosário, ok? O assunto que o professor Kevin vai tratar é aplicação de texto para auditoria eficaz. Dr. Kevin. Thank you very much. So I get to present something brand new. No one has ever heard this before, except... Uh, the people I traveled with, I sort of pitched it to them a little bit. But I have some new results. You're the first to hear about it. I haven't even published them yet. I don't know if anyone will publish them. So you're a good uh, audience to test it out on. But I like uh, text mining research. It's a lot of fun. You get to deal with new data sets. You get to try to understand the way people think and predict the way they'll write and try to um, or, or talk and try to come up with reasons why you see certain observations. It's much like uh, a lot of science out there, but um, I'm particularly fond of what I do. So here's something new for you. So my topic is text mining for auditing purposes. Most of the information sent to the SEC is in the form of text. But there's no requirement that the text is analyzed uh, in some sort of systematic fashion for it uh, to discover new information. So this is a big opportunity for auditors to discover and create new methods for auditing financial reports. There are many approaches to analyzing text. And there's uh, a lot that I could tell you, but I'm just going to talk about two, maybe just one, since we're late. Uh, cases where um, auditors can use this approach to discover information. So the first case has to do with identifying fraudulent language in financial reports. This is the new one that I've uh, been working on. And then an, another project that uh, I was working on is analyzing source code using text analytic tools. So in fraudulent and financial reports, um, the most read section in, you know, this is in uh, America, and the most read section is called the management discussion and analysis section, okay? This is what investors will read, even those who are not big institutional investors, you know, private individuals, they can read this and they can try and get a sense of the company's direction, what challenges they're facing, and so it's a very uh, popular piece of uh, text to analyze in, in research. So it turns out that in any sort of corpus or group of texts, you could look at uh, history journals, biology journals. Well, you could look at the MDNAs also in the annual reports. This is a group of texts, and they, these, these groups of texts, they have something in common. They use the similar phrases. So I could go through all of the MDNAs and identify what are the phrases that are always used commonly. And in the literature, these common phrases are called lexical bundles. So I might use that term interchangeably. So a lexical bundle would be a, a phrase that occurs at least 30 times mm -hmm. per million words and also in at least 5% of the documents that I'm analyzing. So it turns out that in 60,000 MDNAs, I found about 350 lexical bundles, only 350 phrases that occurred at, at the rate that I just mentioned. So here are the top 20, okay? I can't list all 350. A lot of them have to do with dates and things like that. It turns out that about 13% of these lexical bundles have to do with conservative language or hedging language. So I highlighted the two that are in the top 20. They're very similar to each other. Uh, was primarily due to and primarily due to the. So let's talk a little bit about what conservative language is. Here are some, a list of more conservative phrases. So what are conservative phrases? They are not definitive. They, they leave uh, wiggle room. So uh, there's, there's room to move around. They express an opinion or judgment. And they manage expectations. So. If you look at these, you can see that these characteristics apply to uh, these hedging phrases. <clears throat> so it turns out there is a field where you find a lot of these phrases, and that's in journalistic reporting. 
So when you watch the news or you read the newspaper, as long as it's not an opinion piece, if you're reporting just the news, you'll see a lot of conservative language. And in uh, the School of Journalism uh, and Communications uh, Discipline, uh, we've been talking to this professor who said that conservative language is said to be actually more accurate than maybe uh, very precise language. Why is that? Because sometimes not all the facts are known. So if you have, every time there's some sort of a big event, especially a tragedy, could be a natural disaster or something terrible happens, the first reports are always inaccurate. So the most accurate reports are the ones that leave a lot of unknowns. They kind of admit, we don't know. So it will give a, a reader the sense of the current situation or the, the sense of what is known. And so there, there's this sort of paradox. With ambiguous language, you actually have a more accurate report, more accurate for that time. So my question is, is financial reporting similar to journalistic reporting? Does conservative language indicate a more accurate report? And do fraudulent reports contain uh, fewer conservative phrases compared to non-fraudulent reports? But there's a competing theory. So deception theories, there's many of them, but they consistently state that and show that deceivers and fraudsters they are less specific than truth tellers. And why would they do that? They want to hedge so that they aren't caught in a lie. If they say something very specific, then you can check the facts out. They are ambiguous, so you can hide, they can hide the truth. They don't have to say anything uh, factual. So maybe financial reporting actually follows deception theory. So does conservative language indicate less accurate reports? Do fraudulent reports contain more conservative phrases? These are the questions uh, I, I was asking. So I went and I found the most common phrases. I used all the MDNAs that are out there electronically, 60,000. I found 348 common phrases, and 46 of them were conservative. These are the lexical bundles. Next, I identified 208 companies that were fraudulent. Uh, had MDNAs that were found to be fraudulent. And I found 208 similar companies, and I extracted their MDNAs. I, I have methods for finding similar companies, but I won't discuss that here. <laughs> so I used software to calculate the usage rate of these phrases in each set of the MDNAs, OK? So I could say, I now, I now know how many how often the fraudulent MDNAs use the conservative phrases and how often the non-fraudulent MDNAs use the conservative phrases. And here's a, my descriptive statistics. These are very small numbers because they're ratios to like a million words, how often you see those phrases. I also looked at other categories of words like uh, fair value, some non-cash items, some, word, some phrases that describe the future. Uh, for a kind of a robustness check, I look at just the single words that were can indicate that a phrase is conservative to see if that's also significant, if I could just use that instead of the entire phrase. But this one that says all conservative is my, those are my conservative phrases. And this is my result. So if you look at the row that says all conservative, you see a significant difference. Uh, between the means, between the usage in conservative phrases in the uh, fraudulent and non-fraudulent MDNAs. But what you probably can't tell here is which direction the result is going. Uh, you might have guessed if you looked carefully at this previous slide. So how many of you think that the fraudulent MDNAs used more conservative phrases? Raise your hand. The more conservative, yeah, the fraudulent, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so that's in line with deception theory. How many think that the fraudulent MDNAs use fewer conservative phrases? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> how, and, and how many of you think, uh, uh, well, most of you didn't raise your hand, so. Well, the, what it turns out is that the non-fraudulent MDNAs use the more conservative language. So this, is, this seems to the, give evidence that uh, reporting in uh, the MDNA is similar, reporting in the financial reports is similar to journalistic reporting. Very interesting finding. So what else can I say? 
In text analysis, context matters so much. So in face-to-face -face interviews, deceivers will actually use more hedging phrases, but in some professional reporting settings, at least, truth tellers will use more conservative phrases. So this is an interesting finding that uh, I'm currently writing up. I think I'm going to stop here because you're all enthralled. You all like what you saw so far. If I present the next half of uh, what I have, you might you know, get a little bored. And I think I'll, I'll go out on top. And we're late. I have, to, I have a flight tonight. So thank you.